Before we get started looking at any files, I want to give you a workspace overview so you're comfortable with where everything is and you'll know where to go when you need to do certain tasks. We'll start by looking at the top of the screen up here where your menu is. Here you'll find typical things like opening new documents, saving your files, editing, working with images, working with layers, working with type, making selections, working with filters, working with 3D, view options, and opening up the different panels, and of course you can find help here. Now if you've worked with different versions of Photoshop before, one of the first things that you're going to notice is how different the layout looks. Most notably, it's the darker interface and the sort of clean lines of the panels off to the right. If you've worked with Lightroom or Photoshop Elements, you're used to a darker workspace. If you really find this bothersome, you can go into the Preferences in Photoshop and make it lighter. The Preferences is located under the Edit menu in Preferences on a PC or under the Photoshop menu on a Mac. And you'll just open up the Preferences and you can go through each of these different categories to modify things. So I would encourage you, if you haven't gone into your preferences yet, to take a look at what's here and you can customize how your version of Photoshop works. If you go to the interface category, you'll see the color theme. By default, it's set to this medium gray, but you could go darker if you want or go lighter to one of these other two options. We're going to work in the default medium gray color space. And again, you know, you'll want to go through here looking at the different categories. For instance, you may want to increase your history states to something like 50 while you're working so it will remember more things that you can do and you have multiple levels of undo. Other things in here are working with cursors, transparency, units and rulers. We'll be working with the default inches and points. There's some things about guides, plugins, type, and 3D. When you've finished making your changes, just click OK and those will be permanent changes unless or until you change them again. Right below the menu is something called the options bar and the options bar is context specific so depending on what tool you have selected in the toolbar over here the options will change. One of the tools that you'll be using most of the time is this move tool. It's a black arrow with this little cursor and when you have the move tool selected these are the options that you'll see at the top of the screen. When you have some of your selection tools selected the options will change. So just keep in mind that whenever you select a tool Pay attention to the options on the options bar because that will help you refine how you use that tool. Off on the right side of the screen is a menu for changing your workspace. The default workspace is Essentials and I recommend working with Essentials unless you prefer working with another layout. You could switch it to see what's new in the version that you're working in. So for instance if you wanted to highlight things that were new in CS6 you could do that and then anything that was new would be highlighted when you choose any of the menu options. You could also choose a layout that's great for working in 3D, good for working with motion, painting, photography, or typography. If you ever make some changes to your layout and you want to reset it, you can just reset the workspace. And in fact, the whole workspace is highly customizable. So if you wanted to move things around to a way that suits your personal needs, you could actually save that workspace by clicking on the new workspace option, give it a name, and then always use that workspace layout. But we're going to stick with working with essentials for this training. Now below this is something called the panel dock. The panel dock contains a bunch of panels that will assist you with working on your different projects. The panel dock can be expanded and collapsed by clicking the double arrow. And there's actually two columns here. So you could expand and collapse these. Typically the right side is always open, always expanded, and the left side is always collapsed and will expand as you work on different panels and then collapse when you're done. The whole panel dock area is totally customizable. For instance, within each section is called a panel group and you can drag and drop the tabs of panel groups to rearrange them in whatever order works best for you. You can also drag and drop an entire panel outside of the dock and work with it as a free floating panel. Or you can drag it back in to an existing panel group or between some panel groups as its own panel group. So I'm going to put the color back where I found it, actually right in here, and put it back the way it was. 
There we go. The panels that you'll be working with most often are the colors, swatches, adjustments, and layers. We'll talk about all the panels within the individual lessons as we go. Now let's take a look over at the left side again. The tools are divided into different sections or families of tools. In this first section, you have your move tool. Then there's some selection tools, different shaped selection tools. And then there's more freeform selection tools. And then there's other kinds of selection tools like quick selection or magic wand. And we'll deal with all of these. Then there's the crop tool and the eyedropper tool. And anytime you see a tool that has a small triangle in its bottom right corner, that means that the tool has other tools hidden underneath it. Like I just showed a second ago, if you click and hold down your mouse button, you'll get a flyout menu. And the flyout menu has other options that you can select. When you make a selection, the icon will update to show the last selected tool. And you can toggle back and forth between these. Other things to note is that if you see a letter next to a tool, that is the keyboard shortcut. So if you click the letter M when you were on a different tool, it would bring you to the rectangular and elliptical marquee tool. You could actually choose the M key on your keyboard to toggle between them. Also, there's the crop tool. And below the crop tool is perspective crop slice tool. Those are for slicing web graphics. Under your eyedropper, there is like color sampler tool, ruler tool, note count, etc. Then there's a whole set of healing tools. There's the spot healing, healing brush, patch tool, content aware move, red eye tool. Then there's a bunch of paint brush tools. So there's the brush, the pencil, color replacement, mixer brush. There's this clone stamp and pattern stamp, history and airbrush, eraser with some special other eraser tools, gradient tools. These tools here deal with sort of darkroom techniques. Then there's the pen tool, the type tool, selecting path options tools, and then there's actually some vector shape tools. There is the hand tool, which allows you to move your space around in the workspace, and then zoom, which allows you to move in and out. Below here is the foreground and background color. The foreground color lets you paint or draw in color, and the background is sort of like your canvas. Think of like when you're working on a painting, you usually start with a white canvas. Although sometimes people like to paint on different colors, so you could prime your canvas with a different color. So always think of the background color as sort of your canvas, and the foreground color is the color of ink or paint that you're painting with. Or, you know, if we're working with a photograph, it's the color that you're editing with. You can toggle the foreground and background colors by clicking on this little arrow. You can also use your X key, it's a keyboard shortcut, to toggle between those. Below here is an, another option for making selections. It's called Quick Mask Mode, and we'll talk about that in a later lesson. And then the last thing is to change how your screen displays. There's three options, Standard Screen Mode, Full Screen Mode with Menu Bar, and Without Menu Bar. And you can use your F key to toggle between those spaces. The last thing I want to mention is this panel at the bottom of the screen, which houses the Mini Bridge, which is a mini version of Adobe's Bridge and you need to launch Bridge first before you can access the Bridge. And then there's the Timeline, which is an animation panel, which we will again talk about in later lessons. To expand and collapse this, all you have to do is double click on the tab and it will collapse. It's nice to have the Mini Bridge open. It's a nice way of accessing files and bringing them into your Photoshop workspace.